Hi guys, so today I'm going to be reviewing this book, uh, The Complete Mystical Works of Meister Eckhart, published by Herder and Herder, which is a Roman Catholic uh, publishing house in New York, I think, headquartered there. Um, this volume is a collection of all of those sermons of Meister Eckhart's deemed authentic um, by whatever textual sco scholarship in the 20th century. It was originally published by some occult publishing house in the 80s and by Maurice O'Connell Walsh too, who was the translator. I think he was a Buddhist and he was a professor of like medieval German literature at an English university, a university though I don't know which one. Um, but now it's been republished uh, at the behest of Bernard McGinn, who also gives an introduction. I'll start with just a bit of background on Meister Eckert himself. He was a Christian mystic who lived in the Middle Ages, the 13th and 14th centuries, who was uh, heavily influenced by both Aristotelian scholasticism stemming from Thomas Aquinas, because he lived one generation after Thomas, and also um, Christian Neoplatonism from Augustine and Pseudo Dionysius the Areopagite, who was a, I think, a 6th century writer, a pseudonymous writer who synthesized Neoplatonism and Christianity. But anyway, yeah, these are, they're the sermons, they're vernacular sermons, so they, they're the ones, all of his authentic sermons that survived from the Middle High German. He also has some Latin writings, some of which, a few of them are translated in the back, um, in an appendix, I think, but there are a couple other volumes put out by Bernard McGinn with more of the Latin writings. Meister Eckert was a Dominican friar as well, from Thuringia in Germany. He was eventually condemned by the Pope, Pope John XXII, after his death for some of the things he said that were considered heretical or could be given an unheretical interpretation, even though Meister Eckert had submitted to the Pope's authority and said that anything that was not in keeping with the Catholic faith he would retract. But all of those statements that were deemed heretical or suspect are in these um, in these sermons. Next, I want to talk about just, I don't, some of the, the constitution of the book, I suppose, guess I'd call it. Um, it's very solid and it's, it's a really good quality. It has this nice jacket, which it's shiny, as you can see in that light, and it has the Middle High German text in the back. Probably not from the manuscript because it looks too uniform, but, uh, it's still cool nonetheless. Is it on the back? I don't remember. No, but it has this. I'm not a fan of that font, the main font. It's, I've always thought things like that look a little tacky, but it'll do. You take that off and it's just, it's black at that point. It's probably about two inches across. I don't know how, what the dimensions are all the way, but it's, it's not a small book. It's kind of, it's, it's well proportioned and it's, it's so solid. I love it. And the pages are good quality as well. They're thick and you can tell they're gonna last a long time. But anyway, this volume has the sermons, like I said. There are, that's how they're laid out. There's a lot. Okay, so yeah, there are 97 sermons plus one fragment and then a few other works in here. It's close to 400 pages, I think. No, it's close to 600 pages. Uh, including uh, probably some ending like indexes and stuff. Besides the constitution of the book and the layout, which is pretty straightforward, as far as what's in it, mystical theology um, in Christianity is a bit, it's a bit difficult. I wouldn't enter into this, into any kind of thinking about Christianity with uh, somebody like Meister Eckert. But if you have a good grasp of scholastic theology and philosophy, as well as some, if you read some Augustine, and then if you ground it enough in your own tradition, wherever you're coming from, um, dogmatically speaking, it's not too bad that I would recommend getting into this. But like I said, it requires not expertise, but just a basic understanding of terms. He uses a lot of Aristotelian jargon as it was carried over by the Latins. And some of it is, it's a lot of Trinitarian thought. It's heavily, heavily, heavily Trinitarian. You won't be able to understand any of it without a, a decent grasp of 
how the doctrine of the Trinity has developed in the Western Church since the time of Augustine. I haven't read all of this yet, but I've read probably, what, a fifth of it? Which, that's not too bad. But honestly, my favorite... My favorite concepts he's presented so far, or that I've found, are honestly the ones that were condemned. Some of those statements have a lot of force to them. They could definitely be interpreted, interpreted wrongly, but there's something to them. So a sermon starts like that, it marks where it is in the other editions, and then you have the text from the Vulgate, or a short text, and then he gives it in the vernacular and goes through. Uh, anyway, I'm just trying to keep this short and basic, but anyway, that's the volume. I, it's, I think it's close to $100, honestly, on Amazon. I got it for closer to 75 but it's, it's expensive, but it is very high quality, very worth the price if you're interested in this kind of thing. Anyway, that'll have to be it. I'll see you guys later.